welcome to Fina Aquatics World. In this month's episode, we take a look at the Brazilian Sprint Freestyle Wonder. Over the course of the show, we bring you up to date with the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. And we follow the FINA Mast Bank Swimming World Cup in Hong Kong and Moscow. The FINA Mast Bank Swimming World Cup opened up with a two-leg stop in the Middle East as Doha and Dubai played host to the first cluster in the series. Following a short break, the swimming elite focused their attention on Hong Kong for the next cluster, which also included an event in Moscow. Going into the Hong Kong stop, the series had been all about Katinka Hoshu so far, as the Hungarian top swimmer had followed her usual plan of swimming virtually everything during the competition, running away with a host of victories as well as a few world record performances. In Hong Kong, she decided to switch it up a few notches as she entered 12 out of the 17 events on offer for the female swimmers. And she had a sensational time in the Victoria Park swimming pool. At the end of the two-day event, Hoshu had won 10 of the 12 events she entered, setting a new World Cup record in number of victories. Her perhaps the most impressive effort in Hong Kong was the 200 meter freestyle, where she had her eyes set on the world record. 152.55. Qualify for this final. Not shoot. Straight away takes to the front. Eight lengths of the short pull. She's inside world record pace. She's already smashed world records in this World Cup series. And she's going after another one here. How oh, good was the turn? Uh, she's slightly behind now. Needs to put in a fantastic spurt towards the end. She's not going to make it, but she was awfully close. 151.44. No world record this time around as she lost some pace in the final two lengths, but still a sign of strength by the 25-year-old. She has now amassed 96 gold medals in total at the World Cup, surpassing the great Therese Alshamar at 93 and being only nine short of the record held by Martinka Moravkova of Slovakia. Hoshu was also aiming for victory in the 50-meter freestyle final, but there she was up against Inge Decker of the Netherlands who had beaten Hoshu over the splash earlier in the World Cup. So how's her speed over the short distances? We're about to find out. In they go. The world record for women's 50 meter freestyle is 23.24, set by the She's behind at the moment. Bursting through now. Singa Deke. And it is Deke who takes the win. Decker was once again victorious as she touched the tiles first in 2402. The home swimmers also reaped some success. Hong Yu Tse claimed silver in the 100 meter butterfly and in the 4x50 meter mixed medley. start indeed which bodes well for an exciting finish Hong Kong right in front that's the reaction from the crowd over to the men now and the final leg they're away Hong Kong out in front Jeffrey Chia bringing this one home up against uh, Singapore Shanky Lim Pokman Ngao over Macau and Wu Yue, but it is Hong Kong that grab the win in the last discipline of the evening. China taking second, Macau coming through to take third.
Anchored by Jeffrey Che, the Hong Kong team secured victory in the time of 143.28 ahead of China and Macau. Finally, we zoom in on South Africa's Chad Leclo, who held a slender lead in the overall rankings going into the Hong Kong event. And he continued to impress in the third stop as well. Here's Leclo. Comes out the quickest. Hits the tiles first. After the first 25, and the flow at the moment, hang on, world record pace, and the flow powering away, down to 75 metres. Oh, he's gotten himself ahead, going to be slightly off. Of the world record, not by much, extremely close. Leclo defeated American Tom Shields in the 100 meter butterfly and just missed out on a new world record as his 48.56 seconds was less than a tenth of a second off Koto Tishkin's mark from 2009. With that, we bid farewell to the Victoria Park swimming pool. We'll return to the FINA Mass Bank Swimming World Cup later on in the show but now we put cliff diving under the spotlight. Villa Franco de Campo, the picturesque village on the Azorian island of Sao Miguel, is a place to stroll, or to get to know it in a rather unusual way with protagonist Andy Jones of Free running sort of came from uh, when I was a kid. My parents were always telling me to just get off the wall, or you know, my dad always used to just say to me, "Can you just keep your feet on the ground for a second? And uh, I think it maybe just evolved from there. And uh, I was always interested in jumping off stuff. In the meantime, the 29-year-old no longer jumps off stuff, but from the 27-meter platform of the World Series. A permanent diver in 2014, he paid dearly as a wild card in the previous year's season finale. I had a, a really tough crash in Thailand, and as painful as it was uh, physically, I think it was a lot tougher mentally, and getting over that uh, was was pretty big. And now thinking back on it, I'm I'm totally comfortable, and I'm, I'm back, you know, really focusing on my dives and. I feel a lot more confident. The confidence in his own strength is back. A podium finish, however, is still far away in the current season. But for a rookie, this is no shame. So far this year in the series, I'm not uh, totally pleased with my diving, but it's, it's coming and uh, I'm learning every competition I'm learning, every dive I'm learning something. And, that's one thing I'm trying to work on is just really to have fun with it, relax a little bit. It's cliff diving, it's what I love to do, and why, <laughs> why do it if it's not fun? He wants to have fun as a cliff diver and as a free runner. That's Andy Jones, who at 29 still can't keep his feet on the ground. We're here in the amazing Portuguese Azores archipelago on the main island of São Miguel. It's the fifth stop of the 2014 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, and the heat is on with another challenging location for the athletes to conquer. On the island of Villa Franco de Campo, we're getting back to the roots of the sport, with two dives performed directly from the cliff face and two dives from the platform. The seeding round takes place on the daunting monolith. The head-to-head -head battles begin on another impressive off-the-cliff perch, but this time it's from the island. Definitely straight from the cliff is only for experienced people, it's only for the hard boys. It's, yesterday was a really big challenge for the monolith, and, but I'm really happy everybody, everybody made it safe because it was really rough sea, really high waves and the climb was just really difficult. Now it's crunch time and the spectators are witnessing the sport at its highest level with an impressive display of acrobatic mastery. The current series leader, Gary Hunt, underperformed and he had to take a back seat to watch his fellow athletes fight out the final round. 
Taking a leaf from Gary's book, David Colturi steps up his game and learns a new dive, the triple quad, making him the second person in the world to compete this scary maneuver. And with this dive, he steps in to a deserving third place with his first podium of the season. Uh, I mean, honestly, I think it's just coming with experience. Uh, I've, I've had the potential and I know I have the physical talent. It's just getting that mental edge and, and getting focused and, and having everything come together. I mean, with a field this talented, you, you can't miss a dive and end up on that podium. And with the conditions that we had this weekend, I still missed my first dive and everybody's been all over the place. So to end up third with a new dive in this atmosphere, in this epic location, I mean, just, just incredible. The cliff diving legend Orlando Duque finds his form and his fighting spirit to take second place. Uh, yeah, I'm happy, you know. I, I did three pretty good dives. I missed my third dive. Uh, you know, I, I saw the water, the thing is. It's, it's too many activity in the water, so I kind of missed the entry a little bit. Second place, lost by 10 points, but I mean, Steven did a great competition. You know, nothing you can do when, when they dive that good. So I'm happy, you know, I'm still here. My dive that I had problems in Texas is working better. So uh, I think I can keep fighting a little bit. And last but not least, the last man on the platform to dive takes his first win in two years. And this is the mighty Steve LaVou. Yeah, uh, so definitely started off uh, pretty strong. I was feeling really good with Texas and Ireland especially. Uh, and then in Norway, things got away from me a little bit. I think mentally I, I just wasn't all there. You know, I kind of was just going through the motions, which you never really want. Uh, and then kind of took some time to train with David in Austria and uh, kind of really got our focus back and, and came here with a, a game plan and, you know, execute four dives and, and uh, you know, it's within reach. What a competition filled with drama. The athletes battling the wind and waves once again, proving how remarkable they really are. As always, we look forward to the next tour stop, which will be in Bilbao, Spain. After the break, we follow the FINA Mass Bank Swimming World Cup to Moscow, Russia. It's all about 50-meter freestyle in Brazil. And we get you updated on the FINA World Junior Diving Championships. In part two of FINA Aquatics World, we get more action from the FINA Mast Bank Swimming World Cup. We report from the FINA World Junior Diving Championships.
But first, we visit Brazil and put their sprint freestyle team under the spotlight. Brazil has a strong tradition in sprint freestyle swimming. In the 90s, Gustavo Borges won two Olympic medals in the 100 meter freestyle. Fernando Schirra, nicknamed Jusha, claimed bronze in the 50 meter freestyle in Atlanta in 1996. Their success inspired a long list of Brazilian swimmers and coaches. Cesar Cielo, the best Brazilian swimmer of all time and the only Olympic gold medalist from a South American country, grew up a Shira fan. As for most of those sons of Borges and Shira, the preferred event is the 50 meters freestyle. It was in the 50 meters that Cielo conquered his Olympic gold in Beijing 2008. In the FINA World Championships, he's the only swimmer to win the event three times. Cielo is also an inspiration for younger swimmers, like Bruno Freitas and many more. We met up with the Brazilian team during the prestigious Maria Lent Trophy to talk with former greats, current top swimmers, as well as the up-and-coming stars about this tradition. I don't believe in the natural born sprinter. This is a capability that you develop. You have several very talented athletes who have managed to acquire this capability. The ability to swim the 50 meters freestyle. We've been doing good 50 meter freestyles for several years. Fernando Shearer, Luis Cesar, and with Bruno coming. So we have a tradition in the faster events. 50, 100 and 200 meters. Both with my participation and Shearer in the 90s. Now this generation, with good results, it comes from the strength of the athletes. There's a lot of talent. They also have the development. Deles, mas o desenvolvimento da competência também. Acho porque a gente teve I think because we had Fernando Scherer and Gustavo Borges swimming this event. They were very good. Eles foram muito this bem, motivated eu acho que the younger athletes to take after them and start swimming mais novo, this né? event. Assim, then Cesar came and afterwards prova. Bruno. So I think a lot of people are inspired by those great swimmers and get into swimming the same discipline as them. Ah, eu acho que até a vontade já de treinar um pouquinho menos ajuda, né? Eu acho que perhaps the chance to train a little less helps. A sprinter is a more explosive swimmer, more relaxed, which is a good combination to the spirit. Acho que tem um pouco a ver também com a relação do povo brasileiro, de carnaval, de diversão. E 50 metros é uma coisa bem... de momento. Você tem que estar... Às vezes você não está num momento tão bom, mas você tira de dentro uma energia, uma força, uma vontade de brincar ali na piscina e você acaba se superando. Acho que 50 metros dá para tirar um coelho da cartora que outras provas. Ou você está bem ou você não está bem. Ah, boa pergunta, cara. É uma junção de fatores. É trabalho, é prazer e nada prova, é genética, é mentalidade, é um monte de pequenos fatores colocados juntos, é, acaba tornando o país um celeiro de velocistas, né? Tem uma molecadinha vindo para os próximos anos. 2016, eu acredito que, que vai ficar mais entre a gente aqui, César, eu, Marcelo, Nicolas, mas para os anos seguintes, os anos que vão vir pela frente, essa molecadinha vai vir encostando bem. At the London Olympics, Cielo finished third and Freitas just outside the podium in fourth. Now the host nation is dreaming of two Brazilian swimmers on the podium in the 50 meters freestyle come the Rio Games. Aquele papo que a gente tinha de dobradinha antes da Olimpíada de Londres não morreu não. Vocês podem ter certeza que aquilo vai ficou na cabeça e aquilo vai ficar ainda lá e a gente quer fazer. Olha, eu acho que a possibilidade é muito grande. Eu espero que with more Brazilians on the podium, I'll be cheering. And I will also be competing for this spot in Rio. A lot of water must flow under the bridge before then. You know? There could be a new young rising star come along. Everyone's got to be on their toes, ready to go. If you underestimate the opposition, you're a fool. When talking about the 2016 Olympics and the chances for Brazilian success, it's worth considering the main opposition as well, because the competition is stiff in a splash and dash event, and the margin between success and failure is down to hundreds of seconds. Cara, I think the guys who fight for gold are all the eight who entered the final. Those who fight for gold are the eight who entered the final. Those who fight for gold are the eight who entered the final. Those who fight for gold are the eight who entered the final. Those who fight for gold are the eight who entered the final. Those who fight for gold are the eight who entered the final. Those who fight for gold are the eight who entered the final. Those who fight for gold are the eight who entered the final. Those who fight for gold are the eight who entered the final. Those who fight for gold are the eight who entered the final. Those who fight for gold are the eight who entered the final. Olha, eu acho que é cedo para falar. Ainda tem dois anos para a Olimpíada. It's too early to say for sure. Ah, o Morozov tem nadado muito bem pela Rússia. 
More Morado results is swimming very well for Russia. Manadou is a guy you have to keep your eyes on in any of the events. I will concentrate on myself. I hope to be one of the two Brazilians qualified for the 50 meters. We don't know what will happen, but the Brazilian double on the podium would mean that there will be a big party here in Com certeza vai ser uma festa muito grande aqui no Brasil. We are once again joining the FINA Mast Bank Swimming World Cup as the Seven Lake Series visited Moscow and the Olympus Ski Swimming Pool. Katinka Hoshu has been the leading lady so far in the series and she stole much of the limelight in Moscow as well. But we'll return to her later on in our report and start with Chad Leclerc. The South African has been showing good form the entire series and he came away with six victories in Moscow. Leclerc entered the Moscow event as the leader among the men and he managed to extend that lead even further with his efforts there. Once again, the local swimmers prevailed in the mixed sprint medley relay. A good start in lane number five for the Chinese swimmers going a very, very strong pace early on here. Absolutely powering along now with the final transition. It will be Russia for the flying freestyle finale, followed by Denmark, then China. And wrapping it up with ease is Russia for our mixed 4 by 50 meter medley relay. St. Petersburg club takes out the second position ahead of Denmark in third. Australia's Thomas Fraser Holmes continued his strong World Cup campaign by seizing two new victories in Moscow. Fraser Holmes uh, comes out very strong from the dive. About half, the, half a stroke out in front as we come down towards the 100 split. Stepanovic taking control, 0.18 of a second ahead of the Aussie. Gets a solid turn, works hard underwater, comes up half a body length ahead of the Serb. Fraser Holmes will uh, take out his first victory of the night in the men's 200 meter freestyle. He stops the clock at 142.98. Fraser Holmes was runner up behind Leclerc in the 200 meter IM, but won the 200 meter freestyle, as well as the 400 meter IM and freestyle finals. Veteran Inge Decker has no real challenger in the freestyle and butterfly sprint events at the moment, and she secured four more titles in Moscow. Decker away brilliantly in lane number four. In lane number six, Wu Yu comes up absolutely flying. The arms going around strong. Decker will go into the turn as they duck down to escape the tsunami off the wall. It's Inge Decker heading for home. Half a body length up already. No one will catch her. The race will be on for Silva. Hossu and uh, Ustinova. It's uh, Levison ahead of Hossu. But of course, it was mostly about Hossu, the Iron Lady, during the two days of competition. She secured seven more victories in the Russian capital, now only trailing Martina Moravkova by two victories in the all time list. Hoshu must be recognized as one of the most versatile female swimmers in the history of the sport, being so competitive not only in the medley events, but against specialists in butterfly, freestyle, and backstroke as well. Leaving Moscow and with only three events remaining of this year's FINA Mast Bank Swimming World Cup, Hosu's lead in the overall rankings is a massive 391 points, down to Inge Decker with Maria Belmonte in third. It's far closer on the men's side, even though Chad Leclerc has secured a healthy lead at the moment. Tom Shields is second, 57 points behind, and Daniel Guierta rounds off the top three so far in the series. 
Next up for the swimming elite, Beijing. Now we switch focus to junior diving. The FINA World Junior Diving Championships are held every two years, bringing together young prospects from the strongest nations in the sport to compete at world level. The six-day competition is divided into two age groups, A and B. The 20th FINA World Junior Diving Championships were organized in Penza, Russia. The A-Boys final at the 10-meter platform went to China's Tai Chao Hu with a score of 565.55 ahead of compatriot Li Qingan and Great Britain's Carl Katari. China continuing to win several events and Wu Chunting won both the 1 meter and 3 meter springboard among the A girls. Her total score in the 3 meter final was 488.20 points. The A girls platform title went to Australia's Lara Tarvit, who scored 438.05 points on her way to victory ahead of Mexico's Alejandra Orozco. And more Aussie success as Georgia Sheehan won the three-meter springboard for the B-Girls with a score of 407.65, passing China's Song and Chin in the final round. Finally, let's take a look at Japan's Ryo Nishida, who won a tight 10-meter platform final among the B-Boys with 451.10 points ahead of local hope Maxime Lebedev, despite slightly under-rotating his final dive. And with that, we leave Panza and the 20th FINA World Junior Diving Championships. That's all for this program. We'll be back next month with more aquatics action. Thanks for watching and goodbye.